Welcome to session two of Consumer Behavior, MKTG 305. We'll be looking at the consumer decision-making process. We are saying that marketers, for that matter, businesses study consumers to gain insight into the processes they go through in making purchase and consumption-related decisions. Thus, knowledge of the consumer decision-making process is crucial in devising customer-centric solutions in the form of the marketing mix. A model of consumer decision-making process is discussed in this session to enable us to understand how various factors influence the decision-making process of typical consumers, how typical consumers are influenced. The key topics for our discussion is consumer decision-making, and then, of course, the consumer decision-making process, and then we'll end by looking at some of the marketing implications, very important. Because when we describe this decision-making process, the next higher order question we should ask is, and so what? So that brings us to the marketing implications. Again, we expect students to read the chapter on consumer decision-making of the test that I've listed at the end of the slides. And of course, other relevant test or chapter or chapters or reading materials will be made available on Sakai. We are saying that trade cannot be effective unless the consumer decides to buy. There will be no, there's no, there will be no basis for trade unless consumers decide to buy. So the consumer decision making process is important as far as socioeconomic development is concerned, it's a very important uh, decision. In buying products, the individuals go through a thought process. They go through a thought process in order to form a decision in relation to whether to buy or not to buy, because these are all decision areas. And of course, what to buy, where and when to buy, and so on and so forth. And we are also saying that even in the case of impulse buying, the consumer still makes a decision to buy. Therefore, marketers need to understand the consumer decision-making process in order to devise the right strategies. This decision-making process simply describes the procedures that our consumers go through in relation to need satisfaction. Because we are saying that behavior is necessarily goal-driven. When consumers are in the marketplace for exchange, it's because they want to satisfy a need. So understanding this process will allow us to properly align our sales and marketing strategy. So the issue of the various processes, like all the experiences in learning, choosing, using, and even disposing of products and services are important to us as far as the consumer decision-making process is concerned. There are several models, as you will expect, that have been put forward by marketers in trying to explain this important process of decision-making. I will discuss the typical five-stage model with you, which describes the processes the consumer typically passes through. Like in section one, when I introduced the model, we said that it will normally will start with the problem recognition, 
information search, evaluation of alternatives, purchase decision, and of course, the post-purchase behavior of consumers. This model tend to indicate that the buying process usually starts long before the actual process, long before the actual purchase. It is that relevant to know that consumers do not always pass through all the five stages. It's not in all, case, all cases that the consumers or typical consumers will go through this five stage. They may skip or reverse some of these steps based on the peculiar situation. For instance, when a consumer is buying a brand of soap that he or she buys always, he or she might go directly from need recognition, once a need is recognized, to purchase decision. Here you realize that the consumer will skip the information search and evaluation of alternatives. This is because learning would have taken place and then the consumer is relying on previous experience in this decision-making process. Although the consumer decision-making process is useful in both high involvement purchase situations and low involvement purchase situation, we are saying that this five-stage decision-making process or model is perfectly suitable for high involvement or high involving new purchases. So what we are saying that is useful for both low involvement and high involvement, but it's perfect for high involving new purchase decisions because of the need to minimize perceived risks and of course increase value. So this is a simplified five-stage decision-making model. You see from problem recognition, information search, evaluation of alternatives, purchase, and then post-purchase satisfaction or dissatisfaction. That's where I talked about post-purchase cognitive dissonance. The problem recognition stage, we are saying that this is, the, this is where the process begins. Here, the buyer recognizes a problem or a need, or we may want to use need and wants interchangeably in this uh, case. We are saying that this is the most important stage of the entire decision-making process, because the process cannot start without need recognition because behavior is goal-driven. And we are saying also that this stage may be triggered by internal or external stimuli. I mean, it could be that there could be some changes, physiological changes taking place and the consumer, I mean, need is activated and a goal-oriented consumer we feel a kind of state of imbalance. So we expect the consumer to look for goods and services to satisfy their need. Because all things being equal, once a need is highly intense, it creates a state of imbalance in consumers. And we expect them, we expect these consumers to seek for marketplace solutions by ways of goods and services, brands, events, and so on, occasions, and so on and so forth. And of course, apart from these internal considerations or factors, exposure to stimuli in the outside or the marketing environment or the business environment can also be responsible for need activation. So it has some implication for marketers and so on and so forth. Because exposure to an ad for car may keep the consumer thinking of the need to acquire one and so on. So we are saying that need activation comes from two angles, internal and external. And all this 
have marketing implications. The second stage, like I said, is information search. Why would the consumer go through this process? All things being equal, the consumer will want to minimize the risks associated with purchase, especially in a high involvement purchase situation. So you expect that to minimize this risk, the consumer will search for information, and this information can be internal or external. Let me mention that there are four groups from which consumers will seek information. And the nature of the product or the product category and the bias characteristics will determine which of these uh, areas are important in terms of strategy or in terms of coming out with something to aid consumer information search. We can talk of uh, the personal groups, we can talk of commercials, we can talk of public, and then we can also talk of experiential experientials. By personal, we are interested in family, friends, neighbors, acquaintances, and all that. Depending on what is in question, this personal sources of information may be important, and the marketer need to appreciate this. Again, it could be commercial sources. Commercial sources may be more important in a given situation, depending on the target market or the product category that we are talking about. We can also talk of the public. Here, yeah, we talk of the mass media, consumer rating organizations, and so on and so forth. These are all sources of information for decision making. And of course, there are instances where uh, this information search will be, will, 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 information search will have to do with experientials. In this case, we are talking of handling, examining, using the product, and so on and so forth. Especially in some high involvement purchase situations. That's how come sometimes most garages, uh, reputable garages, they allow for, they make provision for test drive and all that. Sometimes the only way by which consumers can make informed decisions is not just by looking at the price tag. They want opportunity to uh, experience the product. Sometimes even in, uh, you go to fashion houses, they may give you sample clothing to wear and all that, to look into the mirror and see how it feels and all that. There are instances to where we want to rely on family members and so on and so forth. So all these intricate nuances are important by way of strategy. The marketer needs to recognize this and strategize accordingly. Talking about evaluation of alternatives, because of competition, and consumer trying to reduce perceived risks, they may want to evaluate the various alternatives. The important thing here is that marketers need to know the various evalu evaluation criteria, the evaluation criteria that the consumer will use in a given, in a given purchase situation. Because this will help, again, to put forward the reasons why a particular evaluation criteria may be more important than the other. The evaluation criteria sometimes may be based on price, quality, or other factors that are important to the consumer. These days, we know consumers read countless reviews, they compare prices, I mean, because the internet has allowed that form of comparison and then eventually choose the one that satisfies most of their parameters. They come with expectation by way of features, benefits, and all that. So all this uh, evaluation criteria will have to be provided for vis-a-vis uh, -vis that of competition. The consumer does not use one evaluation criteria, depending on what is being looked at various evaluation criteria may be useful. 
There are several processes, and the most current model sees the consumer forming judgment largely on a conscious and rational basis. Of course, consumers also make decisions based on uh, emotional considerations. But this model tends to suggest that largely they take decisions based on conscious and rational basis.